Well, based on what you said at the top of the show, it sounds like it wasn't just NXT was a better show than AEW. It sounds like you actually thought NXT was a good program overall this week. If if NXT would do a show like this every week, I would look forward to watching it. I really would. And, I, you know, I know they had a lot of their good workers in there, but I don't see it, it just it clicked and it was a good time for them to be shown twice one unopposed and one on a new net where they'll pick up a few new people and if you watch this show if you liked wrestling you'd probably want to watch some more of it this is a kind of show that that is is productive it might make a new fan um it, everybody knows i didn't like the fuck we had to sit through an hour of the four-man thing even with great talent in it well three out of four um but to get no winner, th- to me, they should have had Balor and Cole. If they were going to have this fucking match, they should have had this become the championship match to begin with. Instead of gimmicking everything up, putting a hat on a hat, that long drawn out multi-man fucking series to get fucking the five guys that are going to fight for the title and the ladder thing and uh, people are hurt and blah, blah, blah. They could have just come down if they were going to put it on Balor to these two guys in a championship match, which is what they finally did after all the gaga. But this, it was a wrestling match. Imagine that. And and I watched this second after AEW, so it was especially refreshing to see professionals. This is the environment for both of these guys to show their talent. One on one, no multi man, multi man bullshit, no furniture. They just worked and they went 30 minutes and left me wanting more at the end. I was sorry it was over with from the start and they built it because both these guys are so good. You cannot see daylight in any of Finn Balor's Matt wrestling whatsoever. It, it, he, he, not much in Adam Cole's, but Finn is a fucking technician. Uh, do the people know what I just said, that you can't see daylight? That makes sense to everybody, right? They may not know. Well, it, it, when uh, guys in the old days say you see too much daylight, your shit's too light or too loose. All the guys, when they're doing the mat wrestling, they're more concerned with what the next counter or reversal is going to be to actually put the fucking hold on. Finn Balor puts the hold on you. Some guys you'll see a chin lock. And as they're working into something else, suddenly you'll look and there's two, two inches of daylight between the guy's fucking arm and the other guy's fucking chin. Cause they're not paying attention. Both fit, especially Finn Balor, but also Adam Cole, they put the hold on and Finn Balor puts the torque on it and gets the fucking base and puts the fucking body language into it. Like they're wrestling. That's why it's actually entertaining to watch instead of just a rest hold, which, by the way, is not a real wrestling term also. They use it now, but rest hold was made up by the newsletters in the 80s. Um, so they had a great wrestling first segment. They they went to the bro- break, and I wrote at that point, already you can't find anything wrong. It makes sense. It looks good. They're serious. There's not necessarily a clear heel and baby face situation here, but it was okay because it was natural coming out of the four way draw for conflicted, you know, title match last week. Finn Balor started subtly roughing Adam Cole up and Adam Cole sold and then started making comebacks. So you put in the match, they were smart enough that even though neither guy is a clear baby face and heel because of the things they've been doing previously, they gave you a sympathetic underdog in the match, especially because Balor was going over, so that worked even better. These guys are smart. Balor's really fucking good. Um, they did some great false finishes and, and really good selling. Balor took over again and kicked the shit out of Adam Cole, and then they went to the floor. Cause to pick up the pace there, it was more natural there. And that was a break spot that, you know, this is the kind of match that can make new fans. As I was sitting there thinking, if somebody is watching this and their friend or their wife or whoever walks in a fucking room, it's not going to be, you're watching that shit. Like it would be if they're looking at AEW anytime, goofy looking talent guys falling in fucking orange juice. But these guys, good-looking athletes, doing serious-looking shit, somebody could sit down and go, wow. Um, 
Finn Balor, that coup de gras, the double foot stomp. God damn. I hope it's not as stiff as it looks. And I guess they wouldn't be letting him use it all the time if it was. But, it, you know, it looks good. But he hit the coup de gras on Adam Cole once. But he sold his foot so he didn't have to cover right away. So that then when he finally could get over there and cover him, Adam kicks out and the announcers are shitting themselves because it's the first time ever somebody's kicked out of his fucking finish. Well, imagine that. If this match had had fans, they would have torn the fucking house down and left the seats in flames. Then Adam Cole gets the figure four on the bad leg. That's brilliant. Then they, they work the spot where Balor kicks out of the last shot, Adam Cole's knee. But then everybody sells. Uh, Balor foils the Panama sunrise, hits the fucking inverted DDT finish that he does, but still sells his leg, tries to go for another coup de gras, but Adam foils it. Balor finally hits that big 1916 DDT thing as they're fighting off the top. Boom. And that was the finish. The biggest bump of the match was the fucking finish. Imagine that. Great. Gorgeous, brilliant, superb match. Two guys that know what they're doing made the title mean something, did a lot of big shit, but sold in between it so it didn't just fucking slap you in the face that it was phony. 30 minutes, first 30 minutes of the show, I could have watched much more of this. Last week, the hour seemed like three because you can't make those matches make sense. I don't know. Anyway, they did a great job. I stand up and applaud both these guys. What'd you think? I thought it was fantastic. And uh, one of my kids watched it with me. She watched the first hour of NXT with me and she loved the match too. And I thought the last several minutes were really, really good. Both guys are similar in size. And that made the match, I think, even better was just the the fact that it looked almost like two equals. You didn't know who was going to win. Really, really like this. This is the best thing I've seen on NXT, and uh, I don't remember what the previous thing was, but this is the best thing in a while. This, <laughs> this was great. I really, really like this match. And 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 honestly, there were some parts of this show, and we're about to talk about a few of them, but they kept it brief and and got out of it. Which next was Robert Stone in the back doing bad comedy, where he found Shotzi's tank. But then his girl and Shotzi got in a fight and they stumbled into Io Shirai and they all beat up I Lee. I fast forwarded. I ain't going to lie. Then they were at home again with the LeRae family, Mr. and Mrs. LeRae, uh, Candace LeRae and Johnny Sameface. They're in their apartment, condo, home, wherever they live. And I'd fast forwarded into that, but I, I found out, I wrote some girl, but I found out later on it's Tegan Knox. but <laughs> Tegan Knox comes to the door. Gargano's not in favor of having her come to dinner, but they're going to sit down and talk and they go to the break. They had one of the pieces of Thatcher teaching uh Thatch's thatch can wrestling. And I like these sounds serious. Gets to the point. 